this is the most unique building we've ever done before. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> Woo, we got 24 prawns. In case you're just joining us, we bought this boat for $100. We spent almost a year fixing her up, then we took on the Pacific Ocean as we cruised from California to Washington. For the next few weeks, we're exploring the pristine waters of British Columbia, Canada. Make sure to subscribe so you can join us on this all new adventure. Hey guys, it is a gorgeous day out. It is beautiful. It is warm enough to be in a bikini. Oh my gosh, I know. In Canada, what? And today's mission, or the next few days' mission, is to... What? Explore Toba Inlet? Find some bears! That whole trip across the country, we didn't see any bears. I've never seen a bear in the wild. I really want to see a bear. And they say the salmon are running right now to spawn, so the bears are very active. And our other goal in this area is to catch some salmon, so. And on the way up here through Toba Inlet, we're gonna see a bunch of a bunch more waterfalls that flow like directly into the water here. So we'll see them from the water. And while we look for these bears, so I think we'll be able, hopefully be able to see them like at the river mouths and stuff like that, like along the shoreline or at the river mouths, like hopefully they're hunting for salmon. Our one issue is that this area, there are not very many anchorages. Oh, well, there's only really one. You really need to be like sounding the depth to make sure you're anchoring in deep enough water, but not too shallow because there's a 16 foot tidal range so you don't become high and dry in the morning. And uh, our transducer depth sounder is not working. So we're gonna do our very best. And if we can't anchor safely, we'll probably head back out and find a different anchorage, but we're gonna attempt. Now look how gorgeous it is outside. Just stunning. Like snow capped mountains. The waterfalls are gonna start appearing on the sides. Oh, gorgeous. Are you hanging in the shade? Okay, this is one of the spots that we saw someone else had marked on Navionics and it says waterfall. It says it's one of the best waterfalls and we're pulling up. We're like right off the rocks and we still can't see it, but we can hear it. It's around this little bend. This is supposed to be one of the best waterfalls? That's what somebody claimed, but I mean, that's all opinion based. Where is it? I kind of see it right there. So wild, like this is some of the most, uh, this is the most unique boating we've ever done before because there's nowhere else where we've been able to like pull so close to land and we're still in 40 feet of water. And you gotta be careful still, but it's so cool to be able to like pull up right into this forest underneath this mountain right here, it's, it's wild. Like, the camera doesn't do it justice on how small this space is right now. Really? <laughs> Not at all. Okay. Look at this waterfall! the whole bow of the boat, nice no, little rinse under here. don't get it wet. No, we have to. We gotta give it a fresh water rinse. We have the opportunity. Get that close. You can, we can get that close. The other he day, said get, you can get close enough to get spray on your boat. It says in the books, do he not. He said he had the two girls up on the very front and they got soaked. They got misted from the mist. Well, let's see.
So Sierra, she's rigging up some rods so that we can maybe catch a salmon in here. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. This is what she looked up, what they call a flash fly. So we'll try one of those. And then she's also rigging up, we don't have any downriggers on this boat, which is what a lot of people use for tuna, but we have a, what's it called? A deep six, which I think is like a planer. So we have a deep six with like a big flasher on it. Okay, I have no idea if I did this right. And our leader is a little heavier than it needs to be. It's just all we had, but I have, a leader to the deep six and then a leader to the flasher thing that's supposed to spin and act like a school of bait or whatever and then leader to our little thing one thing we have to do though is cut off that barb apparently that's part of the regulations our other one the barb was it didn't have a barb but this one does so our little spoon to our flasher to our deep six to our rod so this is supposed to when you let your line out this is the weight and it sinks down. It sinks, but it also planes. It like grabs the water and like wants to use the water pressure to pull itself downwards. So the point is to get our little spoon deeper in the water column. And then if you have a fish on, it's supposed to, your fish pulls it and then it releases that pressure and it comes up. Right. Well, it was getting late, so we went to start reeling in the lines, and apparently... There's a fish on! What kind of fish is it? A little tiny! What it's is it? Salmon. No way! Oh, I caught a salmon! <laughs> oh my goodness. He's so slippery. Look at that guy. Bye, I would revive you, but... Oh yeah, there he goes! <laughs> Caught one. People are gonna eat us alive for not having the proper yellow line. It's only a few hundred bucks. It's only a few hundred bucks, but we also get eaten alive. Like everyone's like, where do these, do these kids get all this money? Like trust fund kids, blah, blah. <laughs> like we had this Dyneema. Well, it's a huge difference. We're never gonna get that $400 back when we sell the boat. Yeah, I know. And we don't need it. Like this will work perfectly fine for us. Maybe even if we were spending a whole summer up here, but we weren't even, it was, we were only up here for like a month. So you know what? I'm gonna use the engines to back the boat up to there while you pull this in, all right? She's so happy to be back on the beach. So seeing as yesterday we didn't catch an edible sized salmon. But or, wait, what'd you find out with that one? Um, I posted a picture on, on Instagram and everybody was telling me it's a baby king salmon. So a salmon fry, I guess. And they could tell because the mouth was black. That's one of the dictating factors of the different kinds of salmon, apparently. But we didn't see, we didn't catch a salmon yesterday and we didn't see a bear. So the goals remain the same for today. <laughs> We're out walking jetty on this beautiful, sandy, muddy river. This is like mouth. the, yeah, the river mouth, like the Delta. We had a bunch of bear spray on our trip across the country. When we sold the camper, we left it in there because I figured they would probably be hiking in the wilderness with like a truck camper and whatever. And we didn't, I don't think we thought we needed it. No, and I figured we never needed it again. <laughs> but lo and behold, we need bear spray. So our neighbors just let us borrow some. Thank you, Ashley and Kyle. <laughs> bear spray ready, but it is pretty. So from what we read, the proper trolling speed for salmon is what, between one and two knots? A lot. Jetty is, I don't know if we told you, but she is obsessed with seals now. She 
thinks everything in the water is a seal oh, and wants to say hi. So from what we read, proper trolling speed for salmon is like one to two knots, something like that. So we're going about two knots and super relaxing. We're not used to trolling this slow, like offshore or if we're fishing in Florida or whatever, for blue water fish, we're trolling at like five knots, usually six knots, seven knots. We just crossed over to the other side of the inlet. What, do, what would you call this? Fjord inlet channel? But basically like right there, like 50 yards away, 100 yards away, it's 1600 feet deep in the middle of this thing. And then it comes right up to the shore. Like we're in like a few hundred feet of water still and the trees are right there. We struck out on edible salmon, have yet to spot any bears along the shore. So now we're going to give prawns another try. Okay. Take four to see if we can get any spot prawns. Are you feeling lucky? Yes. Shrimp on the barbie, shrimp on the barbie. Ah, uh, a few. We got, we got, I see one, one big one. That's cool. What are they? Those are crabs, but look at that one. That's a big <laughs> Like, imagine if we got like a hundred of those. Yeah. What are we doing wrong? Maybe you're right. Maybe we left it too long. I don't see. Because, like, there's still plenty of bait in there. But it's the smell. So, we've been getting mixed reviews from like people. Some people say three hours minimum. Some people say that's still not long enough. You need to leave it overnight. And then some of our friends just said, oh no, two hours, like, two hours max. So. We don't really know. Next time we'll try shorter because we just did the last three times long. Oh yeah, that's a crazy looking crab. I haven't seen one like that. <laughs> this is one expensive shrimp. <laughs> Will you share him with me for dinner? It, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. We might still be hungry. <laughs> you want to put some more bait in here and we'll drop it in another spot and try again? No harm, I suppose. Okay, well, we really don't want to give up, but we're having a lot of difficulty finding the right depths because Navionics around here is not accurate and we don't have a depth sounder. So we're just going with the depths that are listed on there. And this is time number three that we dropped it in 250 feet of water, so it says. We have 400 feet of line and it's not hitting and it would just sink the entire float. So we're pulling up 400 feet of line with heavy rocks and our trap yet again. So we're going to put it back down. We're going to freshen up the bait a little bit, some more prawn pellets, and I'm going to put some tuna fish. You want to hang it over the edge a little more? Just spray some juice in there. And then should I open this up? I feel like yeah. the tuna fish is way more flaky than the catfish. It might just all come out. Yeah, but I don't know. We're leaving it sit now for a shorter time, so maybe it doesn't really matter. Like we want it to dip disperse quickly and... I just don't know if we're pretty close to the river mouth, so salt water does sink, but is it too fresh to round here for prawn? I don't know, but it was one spot where we saw a ledge and it was in the depth range, so we're just gonna try it. Jetty just wants to eat the cat food. And you almost fell off the boat. So, what do you think? Well, it feels like it hit. It feels like our buoy's not going to sink. So I guess we're going to try it here. <laughs> Hopefully we get more than one. Okay, 400 feet of line later. We got oh, we some! some. <laughs> yes! Enough for a snack at least. We finally got some. Whoa, some from... of those are big. Yeah, look at this guy. <laughs> Holy crap. 
What? <laughs> this is cool. What do you think, Jay? A little like, snack? What are those things? A little snack already? I don't know how to pick them up. Wow. Look how big that guy that is. Nice chunk of meat on him. Wow. Okay, each each one we get, they get a little cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last one for a total of 14. We can each have seven. <laughs> we got one in there, so it's 15. You, you can, can have, have eight. Extra. You can have eight. Woo! So fun. There he is. You see him? He's yeah. pretty big. So we should be right on the surface with our thing, Maybe. like our friend said. Okay, prawn traps back in. We grabbed the rod, so we are going to attempt to troll a little bit. When we were headed back to grab more bait, I saw like a whole school of salmon right on the surface. Who knows if we will be able to catch them, but... They're here somewhere. We have, a, again, the deep six planer on this side, and then just a little surface squid thing on this side. So we'll see what happens. What you got over there? I got a fish. Whoa. Little fry. Is that the same kind we caught the other day? Um, black mouth, yes. Too small though, huh? Yeah. Show Jenny. Hey, look at this top, it's so green. Yeah, wow, look at the color. That's okay. cool. Okay, sorry guys. See him moving. His mouth's moving. You can do it. You got this. I have faith in you. You're gonna live a long, good life. Have lots of babies. Their eyes are, I didn't notice that last time. Their eyes are like, so, oh, not all of them are like that. He's got black eyes. He's got bright orange eyes. Oh no, they're changing colors. Wow. Then they turn to black. That's crazy. That's like the deep depth of color of Here. We got 24 prawns and we finally have a better system of kind of pulling it up. Sorry, Billy has to lift more, but he's been pulling it in and I've been coiling it as best I can instead of like in the bucket or whatever, but just making a big ring down here and then we'll tie a line and that'll be our organized prawn trap line, 400 feet of it. So far we've had more success just leaving it down for an hour and a half to two hours and no, pulling it up? before it was more like three hours, but yeah, shorter time periods. So. Three hours instead of six hours or overnight. Or maybe it's just that this spot is actually finally productive. So we marked a point. Um, it was a, right around the same spot that we did both, that we got prawns both times. So I think we're gonna drop it one more time, leave it overnight and then pick it up and we will switch spots tomorrow. Sierra made a deal with me that if she cleans them, I'll cook them. And we're going to make I... shrimp on the barbie like Sierra's been saying constantly since we got here. Shouldn't have made that deal. <laughs> Why is it hard to clean them? I'm having some difficulties. So I read you take the head off. That part's not hard. Take the head off and then pull out the poop vein. It doesn't break. One lady showed me that I just like break it open with my hands, but that was proving to be very difficult and I was like mutilating them. So then some other guy said he cuts them and everything's a little bit more difficult when your hands are so slimy. And then you like peel it open. But again, my hands are slimy. <laughs> so it's hard to grab anything. It like sticks to the inside of the shell more than other yeah. shrimp. Left any of the vein, you grab the vein now, but 
Here's that guy's huge. Like one of the biggest ones we got. Look at that guy. Ooh. I'm gonna take the head off. Try not to get spiked with their spikes. We have a giant spike right there. Ooh, look at that thing. Multiple spikes all the way up that. Giant spike right here, and then some spikes on the tail. So, we got the head off. Are the big ones easier than the small ones? I don't know, I haven't done a big one yet. Here it open. Like, that outer layer of, like, shrimp is still getting stuck. Okay, and then we can, I don't know, that's like brain juice. <laughs> Gnarly. You can just pull it out. Like that. All right, got the shrimp marinating and some teriyaki sauce. I'm gonna throw those on the grill. And we've got some vegetables. We're gonna do some like vegetable fried rice and throw some teriyaki sauce in there. There you go, your shrimp on the Barbie that you've been <laughs> wanting. Prawn. We're not allowed to say shrimp. They are prawn. Prawn on the Barbie. Yum. Okay, this was some hard work. Now for the moment of truth. Mmm. Wow. So tasty. Should we continue to hunt for prawn? Mm -hmm. We need to get a trillion so we can just have them in the freezer and eat them whenever we want and never buy shrimp ever again. Could you still eat shrimp every single day? I think so. You can do so many things with shrimp. Shrimp tacos, shrimp fried rice, shrimp linguine, shrimp. Pan fried, deep fried, stir fried. And Barbie. vegetables, shrimp on the Barbie. Shrimp kebab. Days on shrimp kebab. And we mean prawns. We know these are prawns, but you know. That's that's about it. Totally worth the 400 feet of line pulling multiple, multiple, multiple times. <laughs> and this is a very expensive meal, <laughs> and it was very difficult. But in but the end, it's a very cheap meal if you don't factor in. Yeah, <laughs> if you don't factor in all of the gear that we had to buy but absolutely worth it and like i said every single time we catch another shrimp each one gets cheaper mm -hmm. <laughs> so right now this is probably like a 20 dollar <laughs> shrimp <laughs> your fried rice is really good too mm. okay thanks for coming with us so far we have seen our orcas we have caught our prawns we have caught two small salmon. I don't know if we can check that off the list quite yet. We can check catching a salmon off the list, yes. but we gotta... Catch one big enough for us to eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we haven't seen bears yet, but hopefully they're coming. We're having a blast in Canada, and I don't want to leave. Thanks for being here. Thanks for always watching, you guys. We hope you guys enjoyed as much as we did. Next time on Tula's on the Summer. It's too deep to anchor anywhere, so we have to get really creative. And we finally find who we're looking for. And while I still got you here, make sure to check out our limited edition Pacific Northwest Mountain Mist t-shirts. It's a super special design, so grab one while we still got them. Thanks so much for watching.